Well, hello and welcome. Mr. Hill coming at you. I've decided to make a uh, YouTube video here on some of the different concepts that are uh, covered in the grade 9 academic math course. And uh, getting off the ground, I find that uh, it's important to have some of the foundational skills that are necessary to uh, go through the math course. So I've decided to kind of decided rather to kind of start off with the uh, some of the initial uh, skills that uh, students need to learn, primarily working with fractions, which can be uh, one of the trickiest concepts to get down and to, to be able to work with them uh, consistently in, in math courses is uh, very, very important for sure. So the first thing I thought we could do is make a little video here on adding and subtracting fractions just to make sure that we're clear with the steps and we'll throw some sign-ins as well um, just to sort of uh, mix things up a little bit. So first thing we need to do is make sure we understand the meaning of a fraction. I don't want to spend a lot of time going over that, but just very quickly with a little example here, um, a fraction of course represents a part of a whole and you can think about different examples, real life examples. Could be food related like uh, uh, like a pizza as an example or a pie divided up into slices um, it could also represent say a puzzle divided up into slices that sort of thing but what's very important about um, working with fractions is that uh, you have to make sure that the parts are out of a whole so let's say for instance and we'll look at an example down here where you've got some uh, uh, pizza as an example it's divided up into equal slices so each one of the parts or each one of the pieces has to be an equal size so think about a, a pizza Pizza here down here we have a pepperoni pizza that's divided up into eight slices as an example so we can count the number of equal size slices out of the whole which in this case would be out of eight slices so that the number on the top represents the number of slices how many pieces you have and that's called the numerator number and the number in the bottom of course is the denominator or the bottom number and that's how many pieces the uh, the, the pie or the, the pizza has in total as an example that's the whole amount it's broken down into eight pieces so we can represent a fraction as an example if we look at the pepperoni pizza maybe perhaps after the party uh, there's only three pizza uh, pieces left rather so if I shade in three pieces of the uh, the eight slices here that we have in the pizza, we can represent that as a fraction of how many slices of pizza are left over. And I can write that as uh, three slices as an example over a total of eight. And then let's say for instance I have another pizza, maybe it's a Hawaiian pizza this time, and after the party there's only two of those slices left over. So I can shade in as an example two slices right here. And again I can represent that as a fraction out of the number of slices again being eight slices here, eight of the equal size slices. So we can write it as a fraction in this case as two over eight. And again the whole name of the game here is when you're working with fractions um, especially if you start to combine these fractions together which is what we're going to be doing in a moment by adding or subtracting you have to make sure that the amount that it's divided out of or the bottom number the denominator is the same so in this case because both pizzas are out of eight I can very easily add them together maybe I'm going to combine as an example um, the leftover pizzas uh, pieces of uh, pepperoni and the leftover pieces of Hawaiian and sort of put them together in one box let's say after the party so I can combine them very easily just by adding the total number of slices is on the top we have three plus two that gives you five and then again that's over eight so we would have five slices in total so if you have this visual it kind of helps you to see that you can combine um, fractions or pieces I guess as long as they're out of the same number and the reason why that's important again the name of the game is that each slice has to be the same um, width or the same size as an example so it works well here in this example so just keep in mind that with fractions, in order to add or subtract, we have to have the same or that denominator number has to be the same. And as long as you keep that in mind, um, then it's just a matter of going through the steps and practicing it so that you get used to and comfortable with uh, uh, adding or subtracting fractions using what's called the lowest common or common denominator. So let's take a look at a couple of examples here. And, and sometimes I like to go through students and get the examples rather and get them to practice them and also get them to practice examples in sort of a, a nice little puzzle format or worksheet format where they can check their answers at the end. So I've got the steps over here on the right uh, with our little smart dog here that's helping us out along the way along with uh, some examples here on the left and we'll sort of go through them here systematically and make sure that we understand how to work them through. So a very simple addition uh, a fraction or addition of fractions here for the first example and if you take a look you'll notice that the bottom numbers are not the same. So we have to make sure that we have the bottom numbers, these denominator numbers to be out of the same amount so that we can easily add the top numerator. So think of the, the pizzas. I have one pizza here that has five slices out of six 
and one pizza that has four slices out of five. But because the because they're out of different amounts, that means the size of the slices of both these pizzas are different. So we have to get the the overall sizes um, of each of each piece uh, to be the same. So we need to find that lowest common denominator. Sometimes I call it the LCD. And there's a very quick way in which you can get the lowest common denominator. Um, oftentimes, which is just by simply taking the bottom numbers and multiplying them together. Um, however, sometimes that just gives you what's called the common denominator, not necessarily the lowest common denominator. You'll see that in the next example. So if I multiply these two bottom numbers together, I get 30, 6 times 5. And again, when you're working with fractions, um, it really helps to sort of practice with the multiplication table. So you're, you're familiar with multiplying numbers and dividing, because remember, multiplication divisions are opposite. So you're doing that a lot when you're working with fractions, which I think that can make it a little bit uh, more tricky, of course, working with these fractions. So as an example here, just going through, we have a lowest common denominator of 30. And what that means is that both of these bottom numbers will, e will divide evenly into this number 30. So 6 divides evenly into 30, it goes 5 times. And 5 divides evenly into 30, it goes 6 times. So what we can do then is we can set up these fractions. And I like to set up the fractions kind of stacked on top of each other because that way it sort of gives you a visual in terms of how you get these fractions to become the new fractions. And the new fractions are going to have this... Uh, this new denominator number over 30 as an example. What we need to do in the strategy here, and this is step two, is we need to figure out how to get those uh, new top num numbers, or they're called the equivalent fractions, equivalent meaning equal fractions. So the way you can think of it is you can think of maybe a recipe. Let's say, for instance, you're, you know, you're cooking or baking something. You want to make sure that you have the same proportions of each ingredient. So the idea here is how many times do I need to bump up the recipe in order to get from 6 to 30, and I need to do the same increase on the top as well. So in other words, 6 divides into 30, we already know evenly, 5 times. So I have to increase the ingredient factor by 5 um, in order to go from 6 to 30. I have to multiply 6 by, by 5. So we do the same thing on the top. We multiply the same thing on the top, which is basically bumping up the recipe by a factor of 5 on the top. And we know that 5 times 5, of course, is 25. So that gives us the new equivalent numerator or top number. We do the same thing or play the same game over here for the second fraction. In other words, what do we do to bump up the bottom number here, 5, to get to the new um, lowest common denominator? We do the same trick on the top as well. So in this case, we know 5 goes into 36 times, so we multiply 5 by 6. So we do the same thing on the top. 4 times 6 gives you 24. And now that you've got that, we should be able to combine the number of slices like we did in the previous example because you'll notice now that the number on the bottom here, 30, is common to both fractions. So that means that both fractions have the same um, number of slices, basically, uh, for the top so that we can add them together for both fractions in this case. So if we take a look at uh, both fractions here, you'll see that we can combine the top numbers, and this is just a straight addition, 25 plus 24 to give you the total number of slices here. Um, this will give us 49 on the top, so 25 plus 24 gives you 49, and then you'll see on the bottom we still have 30. Remember to write the bottom number as um, the number that it's out of. But you'll notice here that this particular fraction is kind of unique because it's, I call it a top-heavy fraction, but you'll notice that the number on the top is bigger than the number on the bottom, and this is called an improper fraction. And if it's an improper fraction, what we want to try and do is convert it down to what's called a mixed fraction. And a mixed fraction just means you're going to have a whole, so think about having a whole pizza and then sort of a leftover amount on top of that. So in this case, we can see that 30 divides evenly. We know 30 goes into 49 one whole time. I can get 30 pieces of pizza in one full, so that would represent one full unit here as an example. And then the fractional part, or the fractional piece, would be the leftover, sort of like the remainder. So think about climbing a ladder as an example. If you uh, take 30 and put it into 49, how many steps do you still need to climb in order to get to 49? Well, if I'm at step 30, um, to get to step 49, I just simply subtract them, 49 minus 30, and that gives you the remainder. Well, 49 minus 30 in this case would give us um, the remainder, which would be 19 over 30. So that would be your mixed fraction here as a final answer. And again, the other thing to do as well, if, if possible, is to, um, is, to, is to reduce your fraction if you can. So you'll see that 49 over 30, we can't find a number to divide into the top and bottom evenly. So we can't reduce it, but we can certainly write it as a mixed fraction, which would be the best way to write your final answer. So that means you have one full pizza as an example, and one other pizza with 19 equal size slices out of 30. 
So that's the example there for the first one. And basically, we want to follow suit and, and do similar types of examples. Um, in this particular page, I'm doing examples of adding fractions that have the same signs. So that means that both these fractions are both positive. But if you look at the, the second example down here, if we just sort of scoot down to the bottom, you'll notice that in this example, the fractions have negative signs in front of them. So we have to take a look at sort of adding or subtracting, making sure we understand how to work the signs as well. But the rest of the steps are basically the same. The first thing we need to do is find the lowest common denominator. Now we need to be a little bit careful with this one because if we do the same trick that we did with the first one um, to find the lowest common denominator, you'll notice 6 times 9 Again, that equals 54. Well, that's a pretty big number. And 54 is common to both 6 and 9. What I mean by that is 6 uh, or 9 will divide evenly into 54. However, this number is too big. There's a number that's actually smaller. That uh, That's why they call it the lowest common denominator that both of these numbers will divide evenly into. So the trick of the trade here, and math is a lot about sort of learning the magic tricks to get yourself sort of more efficient with working with the numbers, I guess, or better working with the numbers. Uh, but the little trick here is to look at the bigger number or the bigger denominator and go up by multiples or do the times tables with that bigger number. So in this case I know that 9 times 1 or 9 of course is um, is, is not going to be the lowest common denominator because uh, 6 doesn't divide evenly into 9 so that doesn't work however if I do 9 times 2 if I go up by a multiple of 2 I know that's 18 and I know that 6 actually divides back into 18 so in this case 18 would be the better um, lowest common denominator to use, or common denominator, I should say. It's the, the actual lowest common denominator. Uh, so 54 would work. However, you're going to have large numbers for the numerators when you write the equivalent fractions, and then that means you'll have to reduce your fraction down quite a bit at the end. So 54 would not be the lowest common denominator. However, it's just a common denominator. That's the difference between a common denominator and a lowest common denominator. Now, usually, the, I guess in terms of getting the lowest common denominator, and that sometimes eludes students, is, is to multiply the bottom numbers together. That's a quick way to get a common denominator. If you really are having trouble or struggling with the multiple part of it, then just work with the common denominator and just re realize, though, that you're going to have to reduce down your fraction at the end, and you're also going to be dealing with bigger numbers. In this case, we can work comfortably with 18, and uh, the numerator numbers are not so huge, for sure. So now I'm going to use 18 as my lowest common denominator, and again I'm going to play the same game as we did before. We need to bump up those numerator numbers, in other words, the top numbers. What do we multiply 6 by to get to 18? We do the same thing on the top. So 6 times 3 in this case would give you 18, so I multiply the top number by 3 as well. 3 times 5 is 15. Now keep in mind though, it's negative. There's a negative sign on the top there, or we could put a negative sign on the top. I usually encourage students when you have fractions and there's a negative, put the negative negative sign on, on the top or the numerator number when you're actually working with the fraction. So the second fraction here we can see that 9 times uh, or 9 will divide into 18 twice so 9 times 2 will give you 18 and again the factor of increase here would be 2 so I can multiply that by uh, 2 like so. So that means 18 times 2 would give you negative 16. Again, because it's negative 8, uh, remember it's negative 8 times 2, so it'll give you negative 16. Now we have a little bit of an interesting scenario here because um, both of the numbers on the top are actually considered negative. So when we write our final answer here, we can see that it's all over 18, and the 15 here is negative like so. Uh, but over here we have the positive and the negative signs. I call these sandwich signs together. But remember in math, whenever you have two signs that are together, like a positive and a negative, remember that the negative is the king. It's the king of the land. Um, if you have one negative sign, the positive sign is the weaker sign. It sort of just uh, cancels itself out or you just do away with the, the positive sign. So the question really is saying minus 15, minus 16 like so. And then what we have to do is make sure we understand how to combine these negatives. So you'll notice that at the very beginning of this part of the lesson, I said that we're adding fractions because the signs are the same. In other words, both signs are either positive, right, for the fractions, or they're both negative. In this case, both numbers here are negative. So what we're actually doing is we're adding the negatives. Uh, think about this if you want a, a better scenario. Think about this like you're, you're adding debt. Maybe you owe one friend $15 and you owe another friend $16. How much do you owe both friends in total? Well, if I add the two negatives, I get uh, minus 31, and that's over again 18, like so. So just keep that in mind. If the signs, and this is kind of an integer lesson as well, when you have negative signs, if the signs are the same when you're, when you're 
combining numbers, you're always adding them. Two positives when you combine them will give you a positive answer. Two negatives when you combine them will give you a negative answer. But you're adding them, that's the key. So again, this is an improper fraction like the previous one. We can see that 18 goes into 31 one full time. Now because we have a negative there, that makes the whole number negative. So remember, a negative fraction means that a fraction is a number. So that means that that whole number is negative. So we have minus in this case. And then 18 goes into uh, 31 one time. And then think about climbing the ladder. Uh, how many left over? How many steps do you still need to go? So if I take uh, 18 away from 31, that gives you 13. On the top, that's the numerator. And on the bottom, we have 18. Again, the, the denominator stays there. So that would be your proper answer as a mixed fraction, like so. Okay, so keep that in mind when you're um, working with these fractions and so on. The steps are the same. We need to get the common denominators, but we also need to watch the signs as well. So that's an, a, an extra little step that we have to keep in mind there. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll shoot over and we'll take a look at subtracting fractions. We'll do a couple of examples of those, keeping in mind that when you have same signs, we add. Uh, but if the fractions have opposite signs, of course, this is when we are going to subtract. But the steps are really the same. You still need to get a common denominator. So I've got the steps, the same steps over here on the right. We need to get a common denominator, just like before. And then we need to find the equivalent numerators or top numbers to make those fractions work so that we can now subtract them. And you'll see the signs are opposite here, or they're, they're they're not the same, they're opposite signs, they call them. Uh, one is positive, so the first fraction is positive, and the second fraction is negative, making them opposite sign fractions. So again, to find your lowest common denominator, we can do the simple little trick first, which is just to multiply the denominators together, and just make sure that that is indeed the lowest common denominator. In this case, 8 times 3 gives you 24, and you'll see there's not a number that's smaller than 24 that 8 or 3 will divide into. In other words, if I do the 8 times tables here, well, 8 times 2 is 16. 3 doesn't work. Then we do 8 times 3, which indeed is the lowest common denominator. So 24 would be the, the best number to work with here. And just like before, what we want to do, same game, is we want to um, bump up the recipe ingredients here for the top and bottom numbers. So whatever you multiply 8 by, or however many times 8 divides into 24, which is 3. And notice it's always the other number, right, if you're just doing a straight multiplication. So it's always going to be the other number and the other fraction, the other denominator number. So we multiply the top and bottom by 3. 7 times 3 gives us 21 there. And then we have this one, uh, second fraction, 3 times how many times 3 goes into 24? 3 times 8 in this case. It's the other number. So we multiply that by 8. 8 times 2, of course, gives us 16. And voila. Now we have both fractions that are out of the same equal amount on the bottom, out of 24. So now it's just simply a matter of combining the number of pieces on the top. And you'll see for this one here, we are now subtracting. We have 21 minus 16, and that gives us 5. So we have 5 over 24. That would be the final answer there. This is called a proper fraction. That means the number on the top is smaller than the number on the bottom. So we're done. We can't go any further. We also can't reduce this one down because, of course, there's not a number that divides evenly into 5 and 24. So that's it. Moving down to the next example here, taking a look at this one. This one's set up a little bit different with the sign, so we'll take a look and make sure we understand it. But you'll notice here, just sort of to give you a basic idea before we start, that this is a negative fraction and that's a positive fraction. So um, the, the signs are opposite, again, because one's a negative and one's positive. So just like before, what we want to do is start to, to, to get the common denominator or lowest common denominator to, uh, to combine both fractions together. Again, we can try the little trick here quickly, the LCD lowest common denominator, multiply the denominator numbers, 9 times 4, which gives us 36. Again, 36 is a number that would work out to be the lowest common denominator because there's not a number smaller than 36. Doing the 9 times tables, 9 times 2 is 18, that doesn't work. 9 times 3 is 27, 4 doesn't go into that either, so this would be the correct lowest common denominator here. So we can put 36 over both of these fractions. And again, same game as before, whatever, whatever we multiply the bottom number by to increase the, or increase the ingredients, we do the same for the top to keep the fraction equivalent, equal, or proportional. So in this case, 9 goes into 36, again, the other number, which is 4, so we multiply the top number by 4. 7 times 4, of course, is 28. So just remember, it's negative in front, so the negative sign, always put it on the top. We can put negative 28 there for the first fraction, and then play the same game over here. 
4 times what is 36? 4 goes into 36 9 times. So again, we can multiply that by 9. And then multiply the top by 9, of course, as well. 3 times 9, which is 27. And we're almost there. Now, this one's a little bit interesting because if you take a look, I'll just combine them this way so we can kind of see the progression. But you'll see the common denominator, 36. So I'll write it in the bottom here. On the top, we have a negative 28 and we have positive 27. So a lot of students will get mistaken and they'll think that we have to add these together because they see a, a plus sign. Remember, you have to look at the signs in front of each number to tell you whether you're adding or subtracting. Well, these two numbers are actually opposites, remember. One is positive and one is negative, right? So if you have opposite signs, okay, then the rule of thumb is that we subtract them. So in this case, we take 27 away from 28. Now, when you do that, You'll, know, you'll notice 27 away from 28 is 1. However, 28 is the bigger number. So sometimes what I like to tell students when you're working with integers, think about it in terms of money, just like we did the previous example. Think about minus 28 representing how much money is owed, as an example, and then maybe $27 you're putting against that amount of money you owe. So you still owe a dollar in this case. It would still be minus 1 over 36 as a, as a final amount there. So that's why the number would end up being negative. So you can you can play that game, or you can you can just think of it this way: because the signs are opposite, we subtract, but the bigger number will be the sign of the answer. So we know that 27 away from 28 is one, but the bigger number here is negative. So that means that the sign of our answer will be negative. So that tells you whether your your sign will be negative or positive. Always look at the bigger number. That tells you whether you're going to have a positive or negative. And in this case, it's minus one over 36. So that would be your final answer. Again, it's a proper fraction. We could just leave it like so, and we're done. Voila. So hopefully you get the basic idea in terms of adding, subtracting. We have to have those uh, common denominators. Lowest common denominator is preferred when you're adding or subtracting. Watch the signs, and, and again, you have to make sure you get those equivalent top numbers. You can stack your fractions like I'm doing here if it's easier to sort of follow through the progression. Now, the last question I wanted to do just kind of as a little bit of a challenge is sometimes you can get fractions that are more than more than two here <laughs> and I'm just laughing at the funny dog there but you'll see that in this case I'm, I'm combining three fractions together I mean, it looks like I'm adding these two and then subtracting there but in order to become more efficient um, unless you're doing a huge long string of fractions it can get quite intense um, but try and get a common denominator or lowest common denominator ideally that satisfy all fractions or in this case all three and that way you can very easily add or subtract the top numbers so in this case here if I look at the uh, the bottom numbers again a, a quick way to get the lowest common denominator would be to multiply them all together but that's going to give you a huge number like 2 times 3 gives us 6 and then multiply that by 12 72 72 works however you'll notice that if we look at the biggest denominator number here, which is 12, move this guy out of the way, um, the lowest common denominator is actually going to be 12 because 2 or 3 divide evenly into 12. So we can just make 12 the lowest common denominator and work with that number. Again, 72 works, but it would just be a common denominator, not the lowest common denominator. So try and get the lowest common denominator if you can. Then we can go ahead and play the same game as we did before. Whatever you multiply the bottom by, we do the same for the top. Well, in this case, 2 times uh, 6, or 2 goes into 12 6 times. So that's the magic number for the first fraction. We multiply the top number by 6, and there you go. The next one here, we have 3 times what to give you 12, or 3 goes into 12 4 times. So again, we want to multiply the top by 4 as as well. That will make that equivalent or equal, 4 times 2, which is 8. And then the last one over here um, is the same. It's equivalent already because it's already over 12. You get a bit of a break there. Uh, the, the numerator number, you don't have to do anything with it, or it's like multiplying the top and bottom by 1. It just stays the same. And like I said, if you're able to get the, the, the lowest common denominator for all your fractions, then the next step is, is kind of sweet because it's just a matter of writing the bottom number, which is 12, common to all fractions, and just doing the, the additions and subtractions of the top numbers, making sure you watch the signs. So I have 6 plus 8. I can do it in the order that the, the operations appear here because it's just adding and subtracting. So 6 plus 8 gives us uh, 14 minus 5, and that gives us 9. So our final answer here is 9 over 12. Or is it? <laughs> Laughing out loud, because 9 over 12 is a fraction that can actually be reduced. And when you're reducing fractions, you want to try and use... Uh, what's called your basic prime numbers, and a prime number just has two factors or two numbers that divide into it itself and the number. 
uh, or sorry, in the number one, I should say. So these are some basic prime numbers here, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and so on. Again, these each one of these numbers only have two numbers that divide into each one. Uh, the number itself, like 2 divides into 2, and of course 1. 1 also divides into 2. So in this case, you can see that uh, I usually start off with 2 if I don't know where to start, but 2 doesn't go into 9, however 3 does. 3 also goes into 12, so I can divide the top and bottom by 3 to cut it down uh, to a fraction that's in lower terms. And if it's a large fraction, you might have to go down a couple times. Unless you spot another number, you can divide into the top and bottom easy to get it there. In this case, 9 divided by... Uh, 3 into 9 rather goes 3 times, and 3 into 12 goes 4 times, and now we have our final answer. And this is a proper fraction, so we can just leave it as so, and we're done. So what was kind of cool about running through some of these problems here um, is that you can, again, I try and encourage my students to, to work through problems and check their answers as they go. Uh, if you're watching the video, then we're basically done as far as the the operations are concerned, but I had included this little puzzle along with, with them in class uh, of some various questions that you can go. What's kind of cool is you can go and decode them, like the last one we just did here uh, was actually this question right here, and we got three quarters for that, and the answer is down here. So it's kind of cool to be able to go and check your answers and decode these puzzles. Like as an example, uh, decoding at the bottom, you put the answer, or the letter I rather, replace it for the number 14 down below here, and eventually it will actually spell a word. So that's supposed to be I here. And you can see some of the other answers that we came up with are in the list. Like for instance, the first one, minus 1, 13 over 18. That was one of the answers we got and so on. So that's kind of a cool way of being able to go and uh, work through problems, getting lots of practice and checking. Math is one of those subjects, um, you know, for good, bad, <laughs> or however you want to look at it, where you have to practice. It's sort of like I say to students, it's like practicing a musical instrument to get better at playing a song or playing the instrument itself. Or it's like practicing a sport, as an example. To to get better at shooting hoops, you have to practice shooting hoops. Math is really no different. So that ends this first video. I'll try and make up another video soon on going through what's called the, uh, the other two major operations of working with fractions, that being multiplying uh, or dividing fractions. I just wanted to separate the videos because adding or subtracting habits has its own set of rules, which is looking at finding the lowest common denominator first, and then adding or subtracting the, the numerator or top numbers. Multiplying, dividing have a, a separate set of rules, um, just to make sure you keep them separate. Anyway, that's it for now. Hopefully the video helped you. And again, go through and make sure you practice your, um, practice your work with fractions. Till the next video, Mr. Hill over and out.